Oh, it is getting real, guys. There's little girls who could definitely do a roundhouse kick to my face. Before I could step out on the pitcher's mound, first I had to look the part in order to play the part. So let's start from the basics. What do I do? <laughs> it is slippery, it is slimy, it is all these words you do not want to hear when describing a football field. We've got last year's blood, we've got the spit bucket, the gear, the gloves, and now we're just 30 minutes away from Great Falls High and CMR going head to head in the ring. After the Grace game, you talked about how you really want to focus on the consistency of this team. How, what are the keys to making sure they bring out the same dynamics in the second half that it did in the first? Oh, oh, no, I did it, I beat no, the no, team. No, oh no, yes, no, championship no. belt, let's do it, I love it. Some of the best parts about going to a baseball game go beyond the actual play, such as hot dogs, popcorn in the seventh inning stretch, but I found one reason people love to crowd the stands right here in Great Falls. A wonderful night here in Fairfield. I think these two are going to sleep pretty <laughs> well tonight. Fairfield, they've proven to come in clutch in these pressure performances. Who can forget that half-court buzzer beater from Keeley Bake to beat Shoto in districts? Orbit, I know you're not much of a talker, but can you tell me what it's like to be the face of the Voyagers? The White Sulphur Springs community came together this weekend for a pretty cool cause. Seventh grader Gavin Voldseth, who has a rare condition, was able to play in his first ever football game. The Northern B Divisional Tournament quickly turned into a 1B matchup when all the 2B teams lost in the opening round. Which is dog days, and that means Ella is able to enjoy the game with me, and all your furry friends are able to enjoy the game as well. But I figure you guys always hear enough from me, so I'm actually going to turn over to Mr. Cooper Crosby. This is head coach Brian Crosby's son and wrestler expert. So, Cooper, you ready to break down the season for us. Missed opportunities really was the name of the game for this one. Fairfield only scored seven points in the first half despite being in the red zone four times and Shelby just could not sustain drives after multiple turnovers in their favor. Gosh, there's so much to tell. Augustus Leagland, a name that won't be forgotten anytime soon in the Northern Sea community, a kid that loves sports, the outdoors, and his hometown of power. He was just friends with everyone and kind of, uh, he fit in well. He was very social, um, friendly. Then on October 23rd, 2010, the Leagland family got a call that made their world go black. No one should ever have to go through that. It was just an instant, like, like, wow. Montanans quickly began their outpouring of support, including having this patch with his initials AL and number 13 sewn on every single Class C football jersey across the state. You know, you live in a small town, it's like family. We all didn't really realize how many um, lives he touched. Power retired his number 13 football jersey, but seven and a half years later, come basketball season, you'll spot Sam sporting Gustus's number on his back. 13's kind of just been the, the symbol, I guess, of uh, you know his hard work and his dedication to everything that he did. I think it shows that Sam thinks a little bit deeper about uh, the activity itself, but more about the um, connections that, that players make with people when they're playing a sport. I shot Don. Well, the 5'11 guard represents his last name through number 13. He still strives to just be Sam. It's not so much you know, following in the footsteps as it is, you know, writing your own story with just a touch of the past in there. He is certainly his own person. Cast his own shadow. He doesn't walk in the shadow of anybody else. Trap two. two. Something without, without effort is nothing. So every time I, I, you know, touch the field or I touch the court, I always try to give it my 100%, even if, you know, I'm not really feeling it. But, uh, I mean, in that way, I feel like I can, uh, I can, you know, make him proud. Reporting in power, Clara Goodwin, SWX Montana. At any sporting event, you're going to get a lot more than just a game. There's the band, the concessions, and of course, the cheerleaders. At Chinook High School, one member of the cheer team makes sure everyone in the crowd feels the sugar beater spirit. Meet Annie Jo Reed. Yeah, 
The senior was born with Down syndrome, but that doesn't stop her from getting in front of the entire school to support her fellow classmates. She is caught on so fast. She amazes me every day. Annie walked into her freshman year knowing she wanted to wear her school's name across her chest while shaking pom-poms which at first made others think. Are we going to have to, you know, make special accommodations for Annie? Um, is she going to take more time? Coach Wood and the cheer team quickly learned that wasn't the case. She's a spitfire, so everybody has to keep up with Annie. Not just keep up, but take after her lead. Ooh, go Annie. From the highest kicks to the sharpest hits, Annie owns it. She is really determined. She will say that she can't do something. Um, but then she will try it again and give it her all. To Annie, cheerleading is more than stomping her feet or clapping her hands. It's her way to represent her school and community. Uh, watching the football is fun. And this team is one of the football, and I love it. Annie's favorite part of being a cheerleader? I like to go songs. Which she gets to perform before every game all while beaming with school spirit. Annie's path hasn't been the easiest, but that hasn't stopped her from proving what she's capable of. She's had to overcome a lot of things in her life and something that uh, she can just look forward to and know, hey, I love doing this and um, I'm good at it and it's just really fun with her and she always tries her very best. Any obstacle you throw in her way, she'll just overcome it because she's just that strong and that confident. Annie knows every time she puts on the black and orange to cheer for the beaters, they're cheering right alongside her. Reporting in Chinook, Clara Goodwin, SWX Montana. Welcome into the SWX studio. It's known as the Brawl of the Wild, Montana Super Bowl, Cat Grizz, or Grizz Cat, but whatever you call it, it's a great day to be a fan in the Treasure State. Last year, the Cat snapped a four-game win streak for the Grizz, looking to start a streak today in Bozeman. It's the 117th Brawl of the Wild. Bobcats haven't beaten Montana since 2005. And the Grizz are trying to make the playoffs in this one. We start with the longest scoring play of the day. Second quarter, Cats up 7-3. Nicholas Sane takes the handoff from Chris Murray. He dashes 71 yards to the house, and suddenly MSU goes up 14-3. But the Grizz, they're going to answer right back on their very next drive. This is Jeremy Calhoun. You've seen him all season long. He plunges into the end zone. The Bobcats go up 14-10. Then right before the half, it is Anderson once again. This time he goes from 19 yards at, out and Cats, they go up 21 to 13 going into the break. We'll move to the fourth quarter of this game now though. The Cats, they're holding a one possession lead. Chris Murray getting in from four yards out, puts MSU up two scores, but the Grizz, they're not gonna go away quickly in this one. That's what rivalries are all about. Gresh Jensen finds Keenan Curran in the end zone to pull Montana within one possession. And then on the final play of the game, there is only 11 seconds left. It's fourth down and 10 for Montana. Jensen's pass, is batted away. Montana State wins the Brawl of the Wild, their first win since 2005, beating the Grizz 31 to 23. And with another week of Friday Night Lights under our belts, we've seen some pretty impressive action from our high school teams around the state, and I sorted through the best of the best. Here's a look at this week's top five plays. Honorable mention: Hart Butte versus Power Dutton Brady. Riley Spoon Hunter on the carry. He finds a clear path and goes all the way down the field for a Warrior touchdown. Another honorable mention goes to Great Falls High versus CMR. Danny Devlin sends that kill home with authority and leads her team to a crosstown victory. Number five goes to Shoto versus Fort Benton. Jonathan Moore looks to the sky, finds Kyler Crabtree. Nice spin move and he's off to the races to score the first touchdown of the game. Two number fours are two big runs from the same game. Big Forks, Fisher Walker hits Taylor Logan on the slant, takes it 80 yards to the house, but Loyola answers with an 80-yard run of their own. That's Scotty Twite on the QB keeper. For number three, we'll head out to a very snowy game of Fairfield versus Conrad. Fairfield, they're just going to do some eagle things here. Ryder Meyer hauls one out to Colby Pitcher and houses it 89 yards for the touchdown. Number two, we'll go out to Townsend versus Jefferson. Alonzo Chapman to punt. But he's blocked by Hayden Juicy. It's going to be recovered on the hop by Peyton Loveridge. Big fella rumbling for the Panthers score. And your top play, Capital versus Glacier. Screen pass to who other than Seth Schneider. Dude is not going down, breaking tackles left and right on his way to the end zone. That's been your top five plays. Remember, you can always see those plays again online at swxrightnow.com slash Montana. And that's your check on sports. We'll be right back.